Hello everybody. This is a technician from Services Unlimited, Parts Guru. I am going to demonstrate how to disassemble uh, Eura S9 One Touch model. And this uh, information will be good for disassembling the XS90 One Touch, XS9 one touch and s9 classic models as well so this uh, demo will be good for all these models now we are demonstrating here the tools that we use it's one of them is the key uh, uh, tool which is a socket drive and this socket drive that we have also has a few torx drive set These range from size 8 through size 30. So this is a very handy tool so that you, you will need these Torx drives. In this particular model, you will need only the S15. Torx 15 uh, size is uh, the ideal one which will be good for all screws in this. And then the key for tor uh, oval head screws. This is the oval head key, very important one flat screwdriver, one uh, bent uh, 90 degree pin and a straight end on one side. This helps to push the uh, ferrule at the end of the Teflon tube to push it in well and then lock it with the hairpin. Uh, a nose plier which will be very handy also to hold the small parts or to push the tubes, Teflon tubes in to the connecting uh, connectors. So these are the tools that we use and uh, now we will go and uh, uh, dis disassemble the machine. So we are going to demo the S9 One Touch model and how to disassemble it. So we will begin uh, disassembling the parts. The first we will remove the drip tray assembly which has the uh, used coffee container. We then remove the water tank lift it up, pull it out, the bean hopper container cover, then the aroma lid and then the pre-ground coffee shoot cover then when you remove it you can feed it from here the pre-ground coffee and then we start removing the rear panel first The rear panel has two torque, uh, two uh, oval head screws, and I'm going to use the oval head key to unscrew these. This rear plate has come off. And then we start disassembling from the top. There are two screws here for this metal cup warming uh, plate. Uh, we will use the T15 Torx drive. And this is the baby here. The second one on the rear side. This plate has uh, wedged three places. There are some extensions and we are now going to use the magnetic section of uh, So when you lift it from this side where it was screwed, uh, you can pull it out and you see these uh, four uh, wedged uh, stoppers. 
and the top cover has been removed. So once you remove the uh, metal uh, cup warmer plate, you will see three screws on this side and there are two of them on the right side of the machine as I'm looking at it from the front. So we will again go back to the Torx drive and we'll start removing these screws. Now this top plate will be free to be pulled out except that in the back side here we have a beam sensor that is connected to the wiring harness in the back so we will disconnect it so when we are removing the top plate this connection will not come in our way and there it is we have pulled the entire top plate uh, by disconnecting this wire. Now we go to the left side of the machine to remove the left plate. I mean from the front it is the right side of course. And this has two torque screws the same size, size T15. So once these two screws are removed, there are two screws here to free it from the front plate. One screw is here, the other one is deep inside. So these two screws will be removed and this way the side panel will be free for removal. The side panel on the top is wedged uh, in a notch that we will lift it from and pull it out from there. That was easy. Now we have uh, disconnected or disassembled the three sides. Of course this one side is uh, still blocked because we don't need to have access from that side. The rear side is uh, completely visible now. So the locations here, the control, electronic control box is here inside and we are not going to touch it uh, because this is something that is rarely goes out of function. Uh, we have here two-way connectors, the elbow connector, and the, uh, the connector coming from the pump to the diaphragm regulator. And from the diaphragm regulator is coming to a three-way connector. And this is the pressure valve, high, high pressure. It is a, a relief valve that will feed the water to the water heater. Uh, so this is again connected here with another elbow, two-way elbow connector. So this is a, a circuit uh, that is of course obvious and you can find it on the, uh, the hydraulic circuit uh, board uh, diagram also. On the right side of the machine, you will see some tubes going out, but then we will finally have to go to remove the front panel but on the top here you will notice this is a brew drive motor which is a low voltage uh, DC motor uh, 12 volts and then this part is the encoder which controls the movements of the brew group uh, from the home position to the brewing position and then back to the home position 
after the coffee has been made. Uh, this encoder is having a harness of wires going to the front control panel and the LCD display window. Uh, this is in the uh, one touch models. The disassembly of the machine is basically uh, targeted for having access to the brew group which is from the front. The brew group in this machine is mounted horizontally across the width of the machine. So this is the top part of the uh, brew group here. So in order to access that we have to remove the front panel. Now in order to remove the front panel there are so many um, uh, tubes that are connected that have to be freed. and one of them is the release valve of hot water that will go back into the ceramic valve which is in the back and this Teflon tube is bringing hot water from the heater to the front where it will be controlled by a knob to turn it to the hot water or the steam function. Uh, then there is a tube that is connecting uh, the coffee outlet this tube is coming from the top of the brewing unit. Uh, this brings the coffee to the dispenser and out into the cup. So in order to remove this, uh, everybody would like to access it from immediate behind the door, whatever the connection. Okay. This is the coffee tube that is coming out. It's almost coffee color. It's coming out to connect the outlet for dispensing coffee into the cup. So I will disconnect that. Here is the tube disconnected. I'll have to disconnect this drain tube going into the ceramic valve. This is pulled out from here and that will release the second connection. Now this Teflon tube that is connecting into the front, it has a hairpin lock and may be easy for pulling it out, but then we notice that the reconnection is very difficult. So instead of disconnecting this Teflon tube from the front, we go back to a more convenient access which is where it is connecting to the silicon reinforced silicon tube so pull this hairpin lock out from here so you can release the teflon tube from the other end here there is more space to access it conveniently and you remove this Teflon tube out of this slot and then pull it out from behind this lock stopper and then pull this through this outlet hole. The passage of this tube is of course from the side so they have tried to block it in a way that it doesn't come in the way of uh, the door now you see that with these tubes disconnected, it's so easy to swing the door out. And if necessary, if somebody wants to remove the door completely, we have here the two hinge pins. Now the two hinge pins, they connect into dual hole. You can press this from the top so that the bottom will pull out and you can release that pin and pull it out completely. I will demo that now. The top pin here, you need to press it from the top. So you will see it is pulling out from the bottom. So this pin is almost out and I will grab it with the nose plier. So this one side the pin has come out. The bottom pin is one that pushes up. So it's a lot easier to pull it up with the nose plier. Now as a result we have freed the door completely to be on the side and away from our vision. This is the baby that we are trying to remove and access, the brewing unit. We again go back to Torx 15 uh, screw. So to remove the brew group, we have one screw in the bottom and there it is. And the other screw is just under the coffee scraper 
there that is the location of that and the third screw is this when you remove these three screws the only connection will be the Teflon tube that is coming and connecting to the drainage valve here this Teflon tube is connecting to the drainage valve with a hairpin lock and we will remove it first before we unscrew the brewing unit so this Teflon hairpin lock is come out and the Teflon tube will be easy now to push it out from that uh, locking position once we remove the brew group so I'm going to now remove the brew group and unscrew three bolts that's this one the second one is here inside behind the coffee scraper that's the second one out the third one is just above the coffee compacting cup on the other side of the brew group Now the brew group is completely free and we can remove it gently making sure that this Teflon tube that was connected because we had removed the hairpin lock first so it is easily removed. So this is the brew group now in this brew group the coffee scraper is still attached the lower portion is the drainage valve and this is the coffee slide which spins the gear here and the gear from the brew drive motor will be operating this slide so this is how the movement of the brew group is controlled that this encoder monitors the moves of this small gear to move this slide and this slide will actually turn the large gear and move it up and down along the length of the slide. Okay. Now the home position of the brew group is when the cup is aligned with the bottom portion of that cup to the bottom, lower to the bottom position. This is the home position and when it starts to move the cover goes back on to completely cover the cup and then the cup will move back to align with the piston which will come down on the coffee to tamp it. So that's about the uh, movement of the brew groups. So the machine is complete the brew group is out and you can clean this and sanitize the brew group as you need and uh, then you can reverse the entire process what we talked about to close the machine uh, the only difficulty somewhat will be to connect this tube because when you are trying to insert the brew group and put it in, in position to connect this tube make sure that it is properly connected inserted well inside the connector here this this is the baby that connects that tube if this is not connected properly then it will start leaking so my first recommendation replace the o-rings on this connecting uh, end of the tube and then lock it properly with the hairpin so that you don't have any problem of leakage so before you close the door the front door you have to make sure that it is connected you pull it out and see if there is any slack or it is loose so that's about the demo and uh, closing of the machine thank you for watching and it is a pleasure to have brought this information to you we will be continuing our series of additional videos as 
we get more machines for repairs at our workshop. We carry all the parts for Jura and you can order the uh, oval head key or any parts that you need for Jura machine to fix it and we encourage everybody to fix on their own. It is the fix it yourself uh, promotion that we are on. Uh, we'll be happy to help uh, with technical information with these videos and also we have diagrams and wiring diagrams and whatever you need. So thank you very much again for watching and we'll be in touch again with additional videos.